Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So welcome back to lectures on advanced calculus for engineers. This is lecture number 4 on indeterminate forms and this is part 1. So in this lecture we will go through what are indeterminate forms and in particular we will be talking about L of et al rule which is very important to calculate certain limits and then we will be going through some uh, work problems. So, just to recall because here we will be using this generalized mean value theorem to prove this L of et al rule. So, if f and g are two functions continuous in a b and differentiable in open interval a b and g prime x does not vanish anywhere inside the interval then there exists a point c in the open interval a b such that f b minus f a divided by g b minus g a is equal to the ratio of the derivative of the 2 at certain point c and the c belongs to uh, somewhere in the given domain. Well, so coming back to indeterminate forms, so there are various situations for instance, if we have been asked to evaluate this term sin x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 as x approaches to 1 or here x square minus 1 divided by x minus 1 as x approaches to 1. So, what is happening here? The numerator is also getting 0 and denominator is also going to 0 as x approaches to 1. Similarly, here as well both numerator and denominator is going to 0. So, we are not getting any meaning, meaningful value of this term as such. So, in this lecture we will discuss that how to find the limit for such expressions where numerator and denominator both are going to 0. Similar situation we have here. So, 1 minus cos x over x and when x approaches to 0. So, the denominator as well as the numerator both are going to 0. So, we will discuss how to evaluate such limiting uh, situations. There is a question, so which is uh, exactly addressed in these few terms. So, when f x and g x both tend to 0, what happened to the ratio f x over g, g x? That is the most fundamental question we are looking at in this um, lecture. So, we will observe in this lecture itself that this limit sin x minus 1 over x minus 1 is 1, the another limit x square minus 1 over x minus 1 is 2 and 1 minus cos x over x is basically 0. So, how these limits are coming, how to evaluate these limits we will learn in this lecture after the L of et al rule which will be discussed again in this lecture. So, indeterminate expressions may appear in different forms. So, there are various forms of these indeterminate uh, expressions which we have just discussed one like 0 divided by 0 form it was appearing in many of those terms, but there could be a situation that the numerator is going to infinity also denominator is going to infinity or we have 0 into infinity form. So, one is going towards 0 the other other one approaching uh, towards infinity then the question is that what will be the product of the two. 
similarly if one is approaching to infinity other one is also approaching to infinity and then we have the minus sign between the two. So, again the question is that what is actually the value because this is not not meaningful infinity minus infinity is not a uh, is not a defined number. So, and there are few more. So, 0 power 0 again the same situation that uh, the number is approaching to 0 and also the power is approaching to 0 here infinity power 0 or 1 power infinity. So, there are various situations. So, all these forms we call indeterminate forms and we will uh, see that how to handle the situation when, once we have one of these uh, forms. We should also note that these expressions like 0 power infinity, infinity into infinity or infinity plus infinity, infinity power infinity and this infinity power infinity. These are not indeterminate forms because we can find these values, we, these are some defined numbers. So, like 0 power infinity we can directly write that this is 0. So, we do not have we do not call it indeterminate form 0 power infinity. So, if this number is approaching to 0 and the above one is approaching to infinity the answer is 0. Similarly, if you have a situation that this number is getting uh, you know unbounded this is also getting unbounded both are approaching towards infinity then their product will also approach to infinity. So, at least here things are defined same situation here z infinity plus infinity if uh, we have a such a scenario then there are some will also approach to infinity. Similarly, we have infinity power infinity that is also uh, you know that will also approach to infinity and infinity power in minus infinity which is something like infinity power infinity and again this is infinity is 1 over infinity that is also 0. So, this is uh, this we can say that this is approaching to 0. So, this in these uh, cases whenever we have either 0 power infinity or infinity into infinity, infinity plus infinity or infinity power infinity, infinity power minus infinity these are not indeterminate forms. Yeah? So, we can get these values. So, these are not something uh, this is infinity we do not have a real number the defined finite real number, but at least we know whenever we have the situation either infinity into infinity or infinity plus infinity or infinity power infinity in this case we know that this is approaching to uh, infinity. Now, coming to the L orbital rule. So, this is a very useful uh, uh, rule which we can apply to find certain limits which we have just discussed or to evaluate those indeterminate forms. So, here suppose f x and g x are two functions and they are continuous in the interval 0 to 1 and differentiable in the open interval a to b and g prime x does not vanish anywhere in the interval. So, these are the, the con conditions which uh, we have for generalized mean value theorem and in that case we also have that f a is 0 and this is equal to g a in that case this limit x approaches to a. So, here this f x when x approaches to a is approaching to 0 and also g x when x approaches to uh, a will go to 0 because we know that f a is 0 and f g is also 0. So, the rule says this L orbital rule says that this limit will be equal to the limit of the ratio of the derivative. So, you one can get this limit x goes to a plus and f prime over g prime it provided that this limit exists. So, if this limit exists the limit of the ratio of the derivative exists then we can conclude that the limit of this f over g also exists. So, this is important that we say that this limit is equal to this when the other one. So, the f prime over g prime exists. Well, so the proof is, is quite simple. So, let x in this uh, domain a to b and x is not equal to a, then we can use this generalized mean value theorem, the Cauchy mean value theorem on this interval a to x. How to use? So, we have here f x minus f a over g x minus g a and that is equal to f prime xi over g prime xi. 
where this xi is xi belongs to a comma x. So, now this f a and g a they are 0 since f a is equal to g a that is what we already uh, assumed before and that was the question that uh, how what will happen to this uh, f x over g x as x approaches to a. So, this f a and g a both are 0 in that case this uh, Cauchy mean value theorem simply reduces to that f x over g x is equal to f prime xi over g prime xi. And now we can take the limit as x approaches to a and as x approaches to a the uh, xi will also approach approach to a and in that case this limit here this limit here f x over g x as x approaches to a will be simply this xi approaches to a and f prime over g prime. And this is precisely the, the result we want to show that this f x over g x as x approaches to a is equal to the limit of the ratio of this derivative of f and uh, g. So, this is the L orbital rule we have uh, used simply this Cauchy mean value theorem and we can prove that this is the uh, th that this limit f over g is equal to the limit of f prime over g prime. We can uh, have this L orbital rule in a more general form. So, one of these forms is written here. So, f x and g x are two functions again differentiable on the open interval i and this interval i contains a. So, in the earlier form we have uh, started uh, this interval from a to b and we discussed using this Cauchy mean value theorem, but we can also uh, have this more general version where this a is in the interval i and we have the situation that f a is 0 and g a is 0 and g prime is not 0 other than this uh, uh, possibly this point x is equal to a. So, it is non 0 then we also have this uh, the same rule that the ratio of f and g in the limiting case when x approaches to a will be equal to the ratio of the derivatives. So, again provided this right hand side limit exists that is important. So, this case can be uh, proved using the earlier results on the previous slide what we have by taking two intervals. So, we break that interval a to x if x is greater than a or this x less than a uh, taking this x uh, to a. So, this where we have this a somewhere with in the interval given interval we can have uh, we can deal this situation also with the similar or the with the same uh, so called L orbital rule. Here we see the more generalized version. So, the L orbital rule also holds for the case when the functions f x and g x are not defined at x is equal to 0. So, this may happen that because we have taken that assumption earlier that f a is 0 and this g a is also 0, but this may happen that that they these functions are not defined at a, but the but the limit the limits of both are defined. So, at x is equal to a. So, this limit x goes to a f x is 0 and x goes to a g x is also 0 both the limits are defined. So, in that case also this rule is applicable which we have discussed before. Further another remark that if f prime a is equal to g prime a and that is also equal to 0. So, if we have a situation that we have applied this uh, L orbital rule. So, limit x goes to for instance a and then we have the limit f prime x over g prime x and then x approaches to a, but again what we observe that here also we are getting this 0 by 0 form when we are taking this limit. So, f prime uh, a is also getting 0 g prime a is also getting to 0. In that case what we will do we can apply this L orbital rule to this f prime over g prime this ratio again, but in that case of course, these derivatives they must satisfy the conditions which were imposed uh, by the theorem on the function f and g. And if that is the case 
then we can apply this L orbital rule to this ratio again and our rule will be that this limit f over g as x approaches to, to 0 will be equal to the limit x approaches to a f double prime over g double prime. Okay, so, L orbital rule is also applicable if not only x approaches to a something finite, but it works also when x approaches to plus infinity or minus infinity we have the situation that f x is going to 0 and the g x is also going to 0. So, we have the 0 divided by 0 form again and there also this L orbital rule is applicable. So, that is quite general. In fact, we have further extension to this L orbital rule that if f x approaches to infinity and g x approaches to infinity as x approaches to a or x approaches to plus minus infinity. So, again a very general form. So, far we have seen that f x is approaching to 0, g x is approaching to 0 as x approaches to a and, and x approaches to plus minus uh, infinity. But in this case now, f x may approach to infinity, g x may approach to infinity. In that case also this L orbital rule is applicable. That means, here also we can apply the same L orbital rule. So, take the ratio of the derivatives and the limit that will be equal uh, to the uh, limit this f x over g x. So, the proof we are not discussing here in this lecture. So, again uh, the second limit I mean this limit should exist then only we can conclude that this is the uh, that the limit of this indeterminate form is given by the ratio the limit of the ratio of f prime over g prime. Another remark we have here that if this limit x goes to a or x goes to plus minus infinity f prime over g prime does not exist for instance. We should not conclude that this limit does not exist because the L orbital rule does not say that. So, if the, the limit this of the of the derivative the ratio of the derivative exists then we say that this is equal to the limit of f over g. So, if this does not exist we cannot conclude anything the original limit may exist or may not exist. So, consider this situation. So, for instance we have x plus sin x over x and we observe that when x approaches to infinity. So, this approaches to numerator approaches to infinity denominator also approaches to infinity because x approaches to infinity. So, you have infinity plus something finite. So, that the whole numerator will approach to infinity and here the x approaches to infinity. So, this uh, we have the situation infinity divided by infinity. So, if we apply the all orbital rule for instance here what will happen the derivative of x uh, plus sin x will be 1 plus cos x derivative of x will be 1. So, we have 1 plus cos x divided by 1 as x approaches to infinity and we observe here that 1 plus cos x as x approaches to infinity because cos infinity does not exist. So, we have 1 plus something does not exist. So, we, uh, we, we say that this limit does not exist basically this does not does not exist because of the cos x, but with this we, we should not or we cannot conclude that the original limit does not exist, because we can easily see that that limit here x plus sin x over x exists. How if we just rewrite this x plus sin x over x into like 1 plus sin x over x and take the limit as x approaches to infinity. So, this will be 1 plus and then we have sin uh, x approaches to infinity. So, something finite there we know the sign is, is always bounded and then x approaches to infinity. So, this will go to 0 and this is 1. So, that limit is basically 1 uh, which was trivial to calculate in this in this way, but if we apply the L orbital rule uh, considering the situation that we have infinity by infinity situation here we apply the L orbital rule and then we realize that this limit of the ratio does not exist, but we should not conclude for the original rim limit that does not exist because it actually exists. This L orbital rule says if if that limit of the uh, of the derivative exists then we conclude that the other one uh, exists right. So, therefore, always we write provided that limit exists then this is the rule. 
we have this example now. So, let alpha comma beta in R and we have this f x as alpha 10 x plus beta sin x over x cube when x is not equal to 0 and the value is given 1 when x is equal to 0. So, the question is that for what values of alpha and beta the function f is continuous in the interval minus pi by 2 uh, to pi by 2. Well, so uh, our the point is that we need to see that for what values of alpha and beta this alpha 10 x plus beta sin x divided by x cube when we take the limit x approaches to 0 it should go to 1. So, we, we, we have to look for uh, those alpha and beta for which this expression goes to goes to 1 as x approaches to 0. So, this is what we are looking for that this go to uh, goes to 1 and, and for what values of alpha and beta. So, using this L of beta rule we have the situation here that uh, so that the denominator goes to 0 or oh sorry the denominator goes to 0 and in the numerator we have alpha. So, the sec x uh, sec 0 goes to uh, 1 and cos 0 goes to also 1. So, we have this situation alpha plus beta divided by 0 when we apply uh, when we uh, just uh, try to get this limit. So, the point is if we have something alpha plus beta over over 0 uh, in order that this limit exists and is equal to 1. So, is equal to 1 is a secondary point, but first is the existence of this, this limit. So, this limit will exist or may exist when alpha plus beta is equal to 0, it has to be 0 because otherwise we are getting here alpha plus beta and this approaching to, to 0. If alpha plus beta is not 0, if it is something, if it is something uh, finite for instance, so finite divided by this uh, 0 will go to infinity and that limit cannot be equal to 1. So, here the, 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 the clarity is that for the existence of this limit yeah, to continue the evaluation of the limit we have to have this alpha plus beta is equal to 0. So, that is the first condition on alpha and beta we are getting out of this consideration that this limit exists because this limit will be equal to 1. So, definitely this limit exists and for the existence the first condition we are getting that this alpha plus beta has to be 0. So, that is the one condition we got already from this consideration. So, assuming now the alpha plus beta is equal to 0, we have 0 by uh, 0 form. So, when we have the 0 by 0 form, we can apply L of beta rule. So, we will apply that. So, 2 uh, alpha then uh, sec x and then the in de derivative of the sec x will be sec x 10 x and minus this beta and cos x then we have sin x divided by 3 x square. So, 3 x square the derivative if we take we have a 6 x. So, this is 6 x and now we again uh, observe the situation that what is happening here. So, x goes to 0 because of this 10 this is 0 this is also 0. So, we have 0 by 0 situation. So, 0 by 0 situation means we can again apply the L of Pital rule. So, let us go further. So, here uh, we have to again differentiate this the sin x will be cos x and then cos uh, this 6 x will become 6. Now, in this case now when x goes to 0 because this is going to 1 this will go to 0 10 and here it will go to, to 1 and this is also going cos x going to, to 1. So, we have 2 alpha minus beta over 6. So, this 2 alpha minus beta over 6 this value should be equal to 1 because we know that for the continuity this limit uh, should be equal to uh, 1. So, from here we are getting the condition that 2 alpha minus beta should be equal to 6 and now by solving these two linear equations for alpha and beta we will get alpha is equal to 2 and beta is equal to minus 2. So, these are the numbers if this alpha is here 2 and this beta is, is minus 2 in that case this function will become continuous. So, here we have seen this application of the L of it all uh, rule. <coughs> this is the last example. So, here we want to evaluate this limit ln x minus 2 and ln e power x minus e power 2 
when x approaches to 2 from the right hand side otherwise this ln will not be defined. So, here when ln uh, this x goes to 2 this is going to uh, 0 and here this is also going to uh, ln uh, 0. So, both are going to infinities minus infinity. So, infinity by infinity form we are we are getting in this uh, in this case. So, we can apply the L orbital rule and L orbital rule uh, says that we can get this derivative of this which is 1 over x minus 2 and here also ln of this 1 over e power x minus e power 2 and the derivative of e power x will be e power x there. So, this uh, is equal to uh, this e power x minus e power 2 will go to the numerator and in the denominator we have x minus 2 into e power x. So, now if we uh, pass this limit x goes to 0. So, we have e power 2 minus e power 2 0 and here also we have 0. So, 0 by 0 form again and we need to apply this L orbital rule once more. So, applying this L orbital rule here for this. So, we have e power x from the numerator and here we will get 2 terms. So, x minus 2 e power x and plus this uh, uh, the derivative of x minus 2 will be 1. So, we will have just e e power x. So, the product rule uh, uh, is applicable and then when x goes to uh, 2 now. So, in the numerator we have e power 2 in the denominator. So, this will go to 0 and here this will go to e power 2. So, e power 2 divided by e power 2. So, here we are getting this limit as 1. So, again we have seen uh, the application of this L orbital rule to find out the limit but what was important that if this limit exists then we say that this is equal to this one, but if there is a situation that this limit uh, of the derivatives the ratio of the derivative does not exist in that case we should not conclude anything about the limit. So, getting to the conclusion what we have learned that there are various indeterminate forms where the values are not known or not meaningful numbers. So, like 0 over 0 form or infinity by infinity and there were 0 into infinity form and we have infinity minus infinity and there are 3 more uh, forms here uh, in the exponent. So, 0 power 0 or infinity power uh, 0 and 1 power infinity. And what we have learned here in this uh, lecture that this L orbital rule is very useful for getting uh, for evaluating such limits which says that the, the limit here f x over g x will be equal to uh, the limit of f prime over g prime and if this also goes to 0 we can further apply this uh, for the second derivative or third derivative and so on. So, here uh, we have the references which are used to prepare uh, this lecture and with this I thank you very much for your attention.